That's how we doing. Doug Rice, 6 a.m. I'm on time, folks. Let it be understood. I am here and I am on time, dog. Can't ask for better than that. Today, folks, it's going to be a different show. It's not going to be different as much <clears throat> as, as it is a, a more a, a narration and observation of the conflagration in this nation that we're all facing. Hey, that was pretty good. Okay, so uh, 601, uh, this is Doug Rice. Two four-letter words. You like that? Two four-letter words. There are times uh, a, a third four-letter word accompanies people referring to me. You know, I get it. I get it. I'm a bit of an irritant. You know, <clears throat> not quite a fucking preacher, no, not a fucking minister, because he curses, he uses profanity, you know, <clears throat> not quite a fucking scholar, because he really doesn't do a bunch of book referrals, he just fucking talks. So I was trying to pigeonhole just what I do and why. Well, we know why I do it. I was triggered January 6, 2021. <clears throat> and, you know, for those of you that follow me on TikTok and see what I go through and you know, navigating caucasity as it rears its ugly head. Um, I find it interesting. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite this. I'm not quite that. And uh, so I decided this morning I was going to do a little. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm not explaining as much as giving you a little freestyle, free association, word association. Talk about the kingdom. Uh, the most principal and paramount of this entire endeavor that we are all on is entrance into the kingdom. I was thinking about priorities. We all <clears throat> associate our lives with the priorities that we uh, put in them. And for a long time, I had, you know, my priorities were all fucked up. My priorities as a young person were as stupid as they come. And the reason I don't really... You know, I keep it away from self is because that, too, is the downfall of many that may speak up. You know, all I'm doing is speaking up. I don't want to really be labeled. You know, if you got to label me, just say I'm a shit talker. OK, you know, I talk shit. Now, there's another uh, synonym that you might use. I tell the truth. Tell the truth and. I back it by news observances after search terming two words, black news. That's the format of the Doug Rice Show for those of you who wish to simply look back at some of the videos. Again, this is the Doug Rice Show. My name is Doug Rice. Doug Rice, the one and only, the name of the YouTube video. Today, I decided to not report on news just to simply do a little free association, talk to you as Hebrews tell you a little bit of where I'm coming from, which I think is most important. There are brothers and sisters out there who are laying it down. I mean, the knowledge is thick. I mean, the meat of what you can take in. This is, I don't want to say it's satire, but I do want to say it's tongue in cheek in maybe how I deliver it so that when those who are not us, look, they may simply dismiss me as some kind of clown. Fuck that, right? Oh, nobody's listening to him. He curses like a fucking sailor, right? I'm good with that. I'm good with that because, you see, I've seen both sides of the coin for men, black men like myself that decide to do this. I've seen the trajectory of both sides. I'm trying to thread a needle. One side... You know, you look respectable, you dress in suits, you don't use profanity, okay? You, you know, you associate yourself with the black movement, and you implore caucasity to listen and come to its senses regarding treatment of Negroes in this country. And you make that fucking shit a career. All the while looking squarely in the face of our oppressors, all the while knowing they will never change. Never give us our due. The very thought 
of allowing Negroes to have an equal footing in this country goes contrary to how the country itself was established and built. And those in charge will never allow that balance to offset, period. And I grow weary of watching those of us who take that trajectory, who think the job is the movement. It ain't the fucking job. Trust me. The job is the kingdom. And so we get clowns that profess God's kingdom and joining themselves in the kingdoms of men. And I also take note that these same men, like Reverend Warnock, Reverend Sharpton, all claiming this reverence for the kingdom, who cast their hat in with the kingdoms of men. I've implored Reverend Warnock to please remove that title from his, from his name. He no longer deserves it. He never did. But I digress. The other trajectory is, is those of us who make it, you know, not necessarily an inviting you know, instance to approach them, but they make it so that the threat factor coming from whatever they're saying is such that they become a target. Most times it's about them making it about themselves. That's where they go wrong. So I refuse to take the paths of either of those individuals who do what I do. I'm a fucking curse. I'm going to keep it fucking real. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what the fuck's going on. This is the Doug Rice Show, goddammit. You don't like it, I don't give a fuck. Get on, okay? I'm not here to promote any goddamn religion. No. No, we're servants of the Most High by default. You're Hebrews. Get the fuck over it. I don't care. There's nothing that you can do, say, that will take that status away from you as Negroes in this country. So please, don't tell me not to use profanity. If that's... The number one worry I have in this whole fucking deal, then I'll just keep cursing if you don't mind. So that's where we're at. That's who I am. That's what we're doing. And let's continue. For God's sake, folks, the kingdom approaches this planet. You got a choice and you better make it fast. You see what they're doing behind us. You see what they're doing in front of us. You see what they're doing behind them. And the future don't look bright. Not only does the future not look bright here in the United Snakes of America, the future doesn't look bright globally. I'd say that, uh, you know, these fucking fossils, these, and I think, you know, the term applies aptly, oh, fay motherfuckers who believe the entitlement of their ancestors gives them the authority to start war and just, you know, act a general fucking fool, all based on their fear of being replaced. This is why we are in the midst of the history we are suffering right now on their part, from their point of view. Now, scripturally, I believe we are prophetically smack dab in the middle of prophecy. And I see, I see scriptures unfolding right in front of me. I see prophecy unfolding. Everybody's, <clears throat> everybody's taking their place. Everybody's on their mark. The stage is set. The actors are ready. I mean, they're searching for submarines on the East Coast and the West Coast. Why are they searching for submarines? Do you not know that? Brothers and sisters, how many of us know what's actually going on in this goddamned place? Instead, I'll tell you what we're served. We're served with the caricature of us. We're presented, when we begin to peer into that abstract character, characterization of who black people are in their eyes in this country, you can get lost in that shit. What I'm trying to do is at least be a beacon of sound. 
I think that's what it is. I'm trying to be a big mouth, if you must. I've been talking to people for 30 years, so I figured, fuck it. Hebrews need to hear what I got to say. I believe that. And I'm not trying to lead you anywhere. I'm trying to gather you. We need to gather. First, mentally, we need to gather. But before we can gather unto ourselves, we first have to examine our conduct, our beliefs. We have to examine the reasons we do the things we do in this place. I think it's really important that we examine closely our origins. I've said that before on many a show. I mean, <clears throat> listen to me. You cannot walk about this country and look in the faces of the ancestors of the enslavers that brought us here and not understand that that is on their mind every day. And as they look at us, some are triggered to act out on that historical circumstance. And listen, folks, let's not fool ourselves. We know why they act the way they do towards us. We know that the reasons we have to endure Karens and Bobs and Kens. You know what I mean? wealth managers whose sons get the wrong order and so berate the preparer with racial insult. He could have just cursed the dude out. Listen, if if any of our oppressors need some lessons in how to just just you know just dress persons down without going racial, they can come to the Doug Rice School of verbal expression. I mean, give me a fucking break. But what did he do? And yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the guy that ordered a smoothie for his son in a fucking mall. This wealth manager. Just a nondescript white guy. You look at him, you look away, good morning, good afternoon, you pass him by, he passes you. Little do you know, that this individual holds within him the sentiment of racist rage that will express itself at the slightest incident. And so you pass this guy, he orders a smoothie. The person that serves the smoothie happens to be someone he associates with us. Doesn't even have to be a Negro. And the first thing this man, this seemingly normal man, this man who has certainly spoken to, to Negroes about their wealth and their management. And, I mean, he looks like he's had a rather okay career up until that particular moment, at which point he was fucking fired, thank God. But, um, you know, you think this guy, cool guy, right, ordered a smoothie. Guy gives the smoothie, makes, makes a mistake, puts peanuts in the smoothie. This is why the father went on a racist type. What did this mistake have to do with the race of the individual preparing the smoothie, for God's sake? And you wonder why I, I implore all of us to re-examine our position in this country. Don't be mistaken. You know, you can present you a smile all fucking day long. I don't, I don't care about the smiles. I don't care about the kind goddamned words. I care about the moment in time you see a Black Lives Matter sign and lose your goddamned minds. That's what most concerns me. I'm more concerned with your children racially bullying our children, to the point that our children at 10 years old take their lives. I'm more concerned with that aspect of your society and how it expresses itself toward Negroes. No, I'm not going to encourage not a single one of us to go about this place with a fucking smile on your faces.
And now listen, I mean, some of us, you know, some of us dig this shit. I dig it, I understand. It's entertaining. It's a distraction. As they lose their minds, they offer you as much distraction as you can handle. I mean, every film, every news media, every bit of entertainment, every kind of titillating distraction that you can muster, even that, that underbelly distraction so readily available right in the hands of every individual who owns a phone. The discipline is to anchor yourselves in reality, to understand that here is here, to face the facts. Listen, I can focus on good news. Yeah, I can, I can find a hell of a lot of good news regarding black people in this country. I certainly can. But that's not the fucking point of the Doug Rice show. Yes, no, it's not. No, because you see, uh, the circumstances of our being here is the rub. To me, that's the point. Fuck everything else. I don't care. Don't you tell me to get over my history and I got to go to downtown D.C. and somehow fit myself between the statues of your fucking forefathers all goddamn day while I just try to get around. I got Jefferson. I got Washington. I got Franklin. I got Lincoln. I got everybody. And I mentioned slavery, and the first one of you motherfuckers right beside the Lincoln statue tells me to get over slavery. What the fuck? And now you want to cancel the history of slavery from your schools. Let me ask you, will the statues remain? I'm just I'm saying, no, you, you know, Ron DeSantis, can somebody get Ron DeSantos on the phone and just, just give me an answer? He's evidently concerned with the fragility of, of white folks out there, and they're, you know, they're signing away their history. I, I get it. Okay. But, I, you know, are, is he going to ban folks from Florida to, you know, set foot in Washington, D.C.? See, there's the Thomas Memorial, the, the, the Lincoln Memorial. There's a bunch of shit, a lot of statues. Uh, there are places where they even have, sorry, but there's a there's a hint toward the involvement of, you know, white Americans in slavery there in Washington. So are the folks in Florida going to stay the fuck in Florida? You starting to erase the history that made the country, right? Where are you going to stop? I mean, you're nervous now, right? I don't understand it. It's kind of weird to me. I, I say again, folks, whatever, whatever's going on in their minds, you need to back the fuck up and just gather. First, cleanse yourself of the mimicry we have been forced to take on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yo, oh yeah, we gonna talk plain, partner. Oh yeah, oh, this ain't me. Oh no, you, I know you like him, Doug Rice. Hell yeah, I like Doug Rice too. Shit, I wouldn't do this if I didn't, but I know that the affects, the character, the mannerisms, everything that comes out of my mouth, including the language, has nothing to do with you know, me. This is a reflection of caucasity. You think I'm not aware of that? Of course I am. It's just that I'm a little bit better at it than most of them these days. Yeah, I said it. And, <clears throat> you know, the dumbing down of their society is part of their downfall. There used to be some intelligent folks out there. Now, I don't know, they're like Donald Trumpish kind of folks. And so, you know, we're all caught. We're all trapped. So first, we recognize that as a fact, that we reflect our oppressors. Yes, everything that we do, every expression of violence, every expression of malice, of, of evil, every expression of uh, deceit. Oh yeah, we're great learners. You don't like that? Oh yeah, I will not. I will not. Simply accept Chicago black issue. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We haven't been us since 1619. Shocking, ain't it? Welcome to the Doug Rice Show. I am Doug Rice, 620. Hey, this is going pretty good. Hey, I like it. I hope you do too. That's right. I'm not looking at anything. Just to give you guys a heads up, I can't see. I don't know if there's anybody in chat. I hope 
the tree that's doing her job, you guys talk amongst yourself. I decided to do this this morning because, you know, I, I got up and, and began to think. I said, you know, what's the priority? The priority is the kingdom. So do a little freestyle and, you know, open up to your Hebrew brothers and sisters, your family. Let them know where they stand. I mean, in, in my humble opinion. Uh, and again, folks, you know, call it what you will. Uh, if, if there's a lie in something that I've just said, if, if you find there to be deceit and untruth in, in a word I've just fucking spoken, well, let Detrina know. She'll take care of that. Know what to tell you. Yeah, so. Good morning. Don't rise. Wake the fuck up. And I don't mean wake up like it's 6 a.m. I mean wake the fuck up. Listen to me. You know why uh, I tell people to get the smile off their face? Some of you have experienced it. Some of you have told me about it. Yeah. Very interesting. Um, some of you have told me that you experienced a, an intrusion um, um, of your privacy, an intrusion of your, of your space, because you discover that getting that goddamned grin off your face, it's not just about a serious countenance. It's about discovery. It's about discovering what's expected of Negroes in this country. And it's about how fucking fast they turn their attention to it. You walk about this penal colony for Negroes with a serious face, not smiling, not searching, not inviting. You're not giving off the energy that's so precious. You have business to attend to, and more importantly, you were never to mingle with the nations in the first fucking place. And I know that hooks some of you, but that's just the truth. Let me ask you, what have the nations done for you? Yeah, no, no you're kind of thinking about that, huh? They have a United Nations, don't they? We appear to be a unique class of individuals trapped within the confines of the very country that enslaved us, being treated the same way we were treated when we first got here. Fuck your niceties, motherfuckers. I'm looking at the real. But isn't it odd? The few steps taken toward that recognition being thwarted at every turn. They don't want us to consider ourselves unique, Negroes. And we are a unique and set-apart group of individuals on this planet. It's the reason we were enslaved in the first place. That kind of talk is the kind of talk that most cuts. And I'm not, I'm not going to give you, you know, rank and file. I'm not going to open up a fucking book. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you the source. Look it up, and think about it. Why us? You never thought about that. And then fuck Irish slavery. Don't tell me that the Irish were slaves. No, I've yet to see an Irish burned alive, castrated with his private parts in his mouth, and a photo of it put on postcards circulated in the South, inviting a warm welcome to visitors who want to visit. Fuck you. No one is treated like Negroes. No one is revered like Negroes. No one is imitated like Negroes. And no one is murdered like Negro. I'm talking about the circumstances of our murders, the simple shit that gets us killed. You know, calling for help, expecting help instead to be murdered by the police who come to help you. That's a Negro thing. That doesn't help anybody else. You never thought about that? You never thought about that? 
Yeah, isn't that interesting? Doesn't happen to anybody. Else. I mean, you know, fuck, selling cigarettes, walking through, I don't know, housing developments. I don't know. You know, two occasions and getting killed once. Three guys just fucking deciding they just want to kill a Negro. Doesn't happen to anybody else. You understand that? Doesn't happen to anybody. They don't chase down non-discriminate others and decide to take their fucking lives on sight. Fuck that. Don't tell me we are not unique. We absolutely are. We need to recognize that uniqueness. We need to gather unto ourselves and prepare for the kingdom's arrival. All this other shit needs to take a back seat it's not really relevant. It's not our business. It's not our fucking fight. It's not our concern. And for those of you Hebrews that take it upon yourself to make the United States your concern, I bid you a fond fucking farewell. Have fun. Tell me how it ends. I mean, they got plans. You want to join them? Go. I mean, if you're dead set on being an American, Go. I mean, you think about this as you strive. I mean, I want you to consider the duplication of effort we're in the middle of, because, you know, right now, supposed voting rights are on the table. And I distinctly remember the 60s, us going through the same thing. And you know what's interesting? With the same fucking players. Isn't that odd? I mean, the same motherfucking step and fetch it idiots who implore the same racist motherfuckers to give us what they will never give us are here to help walk us through the ineptitude, the give a fuck, the promise never kept, the get out of our face. You want voting? Fuck you. I mean, that's what they're basically telling you. Why vote? You don't have to vote. You're a Hebrew. Your vote's in. You voted for the kingdom. That is where your vote should be cast, the theocratic vote. It's vote for the most high God, and there is no vote. You just, you know, just say you're, you're in, that's it. Otherwise, you know, whether you're in or not, the kingdom's coming. There's no vote happening. Uh, just to give everybody else a little heads up, democracy's a fucking wash. Yeah, democracy is over. It's done. It's finished. I'm sorry. I mean, you can still try. I encourage you to try. Shit. Hell, I'll, shit, I'll help you try if you want to help. But I can tell you without doubt, democracy is done. It's over. And I only mean in the sense that this equal and fair justice for all was total and complete bullshit. Never meant for Hebrews, never meant for Negroes. In fact, they wrote it into the Constitution. It's still there. And why grin? I find it difficult to watch some of us on TV round tabling our issues with the pressers. As if it's going to make a fucking difference. I mean, and they're on there every day with their degrees and their I'm fitting in and I'm one of you guys while talking about the issues Negroes suffer. Getting paid a pretty penny to sit on CNN, MSNBC, Fox, all these news programs and kind of informing white society of our viewpoint and struggles. Collecting that check, not in the trenches. Oh, no. No, the trenches would have them disassociate themselves from those around them. And no, they can't have that. It's like the acceptance of oppressors is more important than the acceptance of family. And we need to change that. The divisions between us as Hebrews need to vanish. The resentments, all of that. We are one family. One, not camps. One set of Hebrew family divided by 12 tribes. Fine. Wherever they are, whoever they are, I don't care. I am talking about the progeny of slaves and those who identify and accept the fact that that's how we got here. 
That's how we remain, and that's how we're treated. Fuck their niceties. The truth is out. All right. Hope everybody's having fun. Everybody that might watch <laughs> this particular live. Again, I'm not really in the chat. I don't have that up. I'm just praying this thing is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Either way, it's recording. So if I have a problem, I'll just throw it up on the fucking YouTube after the recording is over. Good morning. But if you do like it, 630, like, subscribe, share, comment. Get a notification bell hit. I understand that's not working completely 100%, but I don't care. It'll, it'll be there. All of this is long overdue, and some, at some point, we have to come to terms and stop the cycle of bullshit. You're not going to tell me racism is over in America, Representative Scott. I'm, that did not age well, as Oath Keepers and Proud Boys are taken into custody for trying to overthrow the government. Representative Scott, is racism still dead in America, or is it you're still stamping on the last little cockroaches you see? I don't think so. But again, if we can gather amongst ourselves, if we can understand we need to get out of Babylon the Great first mentally, as best we can physically, we need to gather unto ourselves and wait for the Most High, well, His arrival. And if you are under the delusion that God is not on the way, well, you can leave. You don't have to believe what I'm saying, or you don't have to believe what I believe. My belief doesn't require yours. That's a fucking fact. But I will tell you this. It seems the planet feels something is on the way. That's for sure. So we'll see how it pans out. But I'm Doug Rice. This is what I do. Usually I look up black news. I look up the titillating information that comes out. Today I just decided to wing it and just go solo, a little bit of freestyle. You know, noticing caucasity, pointing it out at every turn. I think it's in our best interests to remain apart from what is about to occur. I think, uh, I just don't see it ending well. I think the bullets will start flying. I think assaults will begin to ensue. I, 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 I look forward to reading about the first assault on the floor of the Senate or the House of Representatives because they know it's falling apart. They're not going to rescue it and good fucking riddance. I mean, if you can't hold on to it, let prophecy fly. Yeah, let it, let it you know, I mean, as Hebrew, let me ask you a question. There's a question for you. What if we had just gotten here as slaves in this country? What would our attitude be? What would we feel about what's going on right now amongst them? I mean, so some of us have gotten so comfortable in our Stockholm syndrome in this place and fail to realize the uprising that's about to occur. Some of us are foolish enough to grab guns and join in. I invite Hebrews not to move, to remain still. There's more to this than we can see. That's obvious. And what I'm really trying to help most of us avoid is what I believe is an upcoming great deception. I believe the entire planet is either going to be deceived or just thrown into chaos. Either way, Hebrews need to keep their head down and their prayers up. And again, I think it's written that the destruction road is pretty wide. The road to living through this shit is pretty narrow. Narrow is narrow, so, you know, very few will survive. Very few, they'll lose their heads in the, in the excitement, and that's, that's, that'll be their downfall. You have to, you have to hunker down, let whatever happens, happens. Let me explain. 
There must be witnesses to what will occur. And here's a tidbit of information for those of you that may be interested. You are about to see great and wonderful signs, things that will cause your heart to palpitate. Keep yourself in control. Control the fear. That is the killer. Just remember that. I'm telling you this almost in posterity, hoping that folks looking understand that as things get more and more exciting in this country, you're going to see more and more interesting things that may cause you to question your very reality. Keep your heads about you, Hebrews. Most will lose theirs. All right, 636, Doug Rice. I might look. I don't know. Is anybody here? I, I don't know. I don't want to look. I don't. I don't care. I don't care. Today, uh, just lazy Wednesday, you know, 26th of January, 2022, I decided, you know, I looked a little bit of news. Same old thing, you know. And some of these folks, they don't change their news sources, their news stories fast enough for me, you know, because I'm, I'm looking, I'm digging. I'm looking for new shit. Now, it's not to say that I wouldn't have found new shit. Of course I would have found it, but I thought my time best spent this morning freestyling. Just giving you, you know, 411, giving you some heads up, you know, early in the morning, Doug Rice, keeping it 100. You know, you know. Anyway, just telling you to avoid caucasity. All of those things as they do everything they can to mitigate, marginalize, and keep us in place. Yeah, that's that's basically it. Hey, listen, another thing, folks, uh, get your food, do your shopping. Uh, this is very important. Uh, you know, stock up, obviously, buy as much as you can, put it up, uh, maintain uh, as much distance. Uh, you know, this, uh, I guess the, 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 the V is real. That's cool, whatever. Uh, more importantly, think about what I've said. Think about what I'm saying. Think about some of the videos I've put up. You know, cross check some of the facts that I have expressed. I'm not going to give you the resources. Fuck that. I'm just going to tell you, here's what I found out. Go look it up. We're almost in a de facto world war. We're, we're, we're so close. You know, why are we searching for submarines again on the east and west coast? I don't know. Why are we looking for that? Why are we evacuating personnel in the Ukrainian United States Embassy? I don't know. That's interesting. Over 100,000 troops amassed on the Ukrainian border. My goodness, what's Putin talking about? For goodness sake. I understand that even China incurred on the uh, waters there of uh, Taiwan. Did that yesterday. What's that about? I mean, we're right on the precipice of great events, and Hebrews need to steer clear, hunker down, pray, consider who you are, and understand there's more to this than just what we see. You understand that, right? I mean, not everybody's looking around at what's going on. I get it. But there's a lot more to what's going on and what we can lay our human eyes on. And I need you to understand that. In fact, that uh, kind of brings me, you know, we pray. I pray, you pray, Hebrews pray. We're spiritual creatures, we pray. That's what we do. One thing about prayer, and I think this is important, prayer is a process. Yeah, the fulfillment of prayer is a process. This is true. Daniel said this, and I've said this before. You got to never stop praying. Pray without ceasing. Very interesting that is said. There's a reason because Upon prayer, it's instantly heard. That we know from Daniel. He was told this. Prayer is instantly heard. However, there's a time delay due to the circumstances of this planet. And the time delay involves fighting through the canopy of evil that surrounds this place. Folks, this is not a joke. This is not a game. You know evil exists. How it got here, well, look up the deluge. There's a canopy of evil that surrounds us. Now, Hebrews, don't get worried. You, as set apart Hebrews, have very little to do with 
demonic activity, unseen spirits. I mean, we have melanin, so that kind of protects us against the unseen world. There are those, of course, that are more affected by the unseen world due to their lack of melanin. Look it up. But I digress. There's a canopy of evil around the planet Earth. When you pray, it's heard instantly. That's very interesting to know. But then, as, as told to Daniel, the assistant sent has to fight through that which surrounds all of us. And it takes days. It takes days. Not only that, upon fulfilling whatever you have requested, as we know Yeshua said, whatever you ask, if you believe it, it will be done. But remember, never stop praying. Pray without ceasing, only because the delay factor here. You don't believe me? Oh, I'm sure you do. You're Hebrews. You believe me. For those of you that have watched my show and uh, have heard this before, you understand completely that this is fact. And so, prayer without ceasing involves process. You keep praying. You keep praying. You're heard immediately. You keep praying. If you stop praying, wait. Perhaps prayers are answered. But understand, it's not going to be immediate. I thought that was interesting. I thought that was extremely interesting. So as we gather amongst ourselves and in patient prayer, consider our plight in this country, in this place, awaiting the kingdom, I think that's primarily the one focus that we should have as Hebrews. I think the rest of it is just fill. I, I, don't, I don't believe we're involved in anything going on on this planet. At this point, we're so recessed and removed from the action, except those of us that put on the suit, bald our fucking faces and represent. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about us that recognize our apartness. Act on it quickly. I think I covered that. Okay, well... All right, so, uh, 6.42. You know what? I think I'm going to call it. Uh, I think this is a good good show. I think you guys understand where I'm coming from. Y you know, this message is not for everyone. This message is for Hebrews. This message is for those of you that identify yourselves as Hebrews. Now, whether you understand this or not, for those of you that don't, I just ask that you study up. You know, look at folks certainly more, more able to educate you than I. People that I refer, like Dante Fortson, his books are available on Amazon. That, that minister alone, referring always to scripture, referring to history, cross-referencing, checking and double-checking, very thorough individual. I'm glad to say that I know him. Another individual uh, is uh, Brother Yacob. I, I dig T.L. Ministries, the end of the world ministries. You got to choose something. Those two individuals stick to the script. And they're pretty accurate. So uh, that would be as far as I go when it comes to a recommendation. But uh, I say this unashamedly, unabashedly, that I'm talking to Hebrews. I'm talking to folks that identify with the transatlantic slave trade, and that's all. I'm talking to you. I'm telling you. You are set apart. You are Hebrews. In a land not your own, stolen. Now, don't get in your feelings about the whole Gad thing and we were here and all this. Fine! Some of us came by by ships where everyone else, okay, we'll take care of that later, okay? The whole 12 tribe thing, Jesus, fine, whatever. I don't disagree. I don't agree. Uh, no one has proven it beyond a doubt and no one has disproven it beyond a doubt. So I'll just leave the whole 12 tribe. You know, Let's focus on the tribe of Judah. That the royal family they had to have in captivity, and the royal family had to travel through trips. I mean, it, it only makes sense. So, that's who I address. If you get in your feelings because I'm talking to Hebrews, you're part of the fucking problem. I say that seriously. If anyone gets in their goddamned feelings because I want to talk to Negroes and Negroes only, fuck you.
How dare you? You got every other group has their own special organization. Not us. And if you dare throw the NAACP in my face, I will insult you. No, we don't, we don't have organizations. And guess what, folks? We don't need organizations. We're organized by the most high God. The kingdom organizes us. Await the kingdom. All else will fall into place. All right. Well, that's it. Uh, 6.45. You know, it's 45 minutes of fun, right? Some of you want to get ready for work. You know. Some of you got haven't even had coffee. Maybe eat breakfast. Get the kids ready for school. This is Doug Rice. This is the Doug Rice Show. Today, I just decided to talk to you. I hope you appreciate it. If you do, show your appreciation. I'm sure somewhere in chat, Katrina's putting in the links to do that. And I appreciate it. But like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button. Play it over. Share it. Talk about it. But whatever you do, get that goddamn grin off your face as you walk about this penal colony for Negroes. It's completely unnecessary, and it's an insult to those who came before us. Oh, if our ancestors could only see us grinning and fucking cheesing in this motherfucker. Can you imagine what they would think watching some of us today Oh, dear God. Anyway, all right, well, that one's just, oh. Okay. All right, folks, good morning. Doug Rice. Yeah, go do something. I got to do shit. Do something. Good, good morning.